Oh, hi, how's it going? I didn't see you there. Welcome to another tutorial on Silent Hill Homecoming. This time around we'll be doing any percent new game. Uh, not There's a few differences in this category <clears throat> than New Game Plus. Mainly a uh, little bit of a route change, a couple extra clips, and then of course instead of using the pew pew gun like you use in New Game Plus, we actually have to use uh, the items that we are given, so the pistol, shotgun, rifle, uh, any of the melee weapons. Uh, the only thing that is banned is the pew pew gun and I think the chainsaw or the buzz saw but that thing's garbage you don't have to worry about that um, but other than that this run is fairly simple I wouldn't say it's as I, I, I think it in terms of clipping it's a lot easier than new game plus but in terms of you know the battle and the fight system you actually have to you have to try when you fight bosses, and again, you still only have to fight Asphyxia and Amnion at the end, just like New Game Plus. So, um, I have explained a bunch of stuff in the New Game Plus run that I'm probably going to go over again, so if you're someone that has already watched the New Game Plus tutorial, uh, feel free to skip past Alchemilla, because I'm pretty much going to say some of the same shit, but... Hey, that's what happens when, you know, the runs are sometimes kind of similar. So, but let's go ahead and get this started. Actually, real quick. This game is very loud, so I'm going to turn it down a little bit so you guys can actually hear the game and hear me. Man, oh man, sometimes when I play this game, it's deafening. Alright, new game. Always do normal. Because hard is for dank memers out there. Put the brightness up full. Costume choice doesn't matter. Just pick the one you like. Again, I always use Young Alex. So we got an unskippable cutscene right here. I'm just gonna let that play out. Where's my squad? Are they here? Did they make it? Hey, hey, talk to me. Oh God! Oh God! Hey, hey, what are they doing? What's going on there? Hey, where are you taking me? No! Hey! No! Where am I? Hey, what is this place? Hey, where are you taking me? No! Where am I, man? Hey, wait. Where are you going? Don't leave me! Okay. First things first, uh, you will start your timer. You will always start your timer when the, uh, mash A prompt comes up. Um... So basically, whenever you start pressing it, your first your first A input, you need to start your timer. So I almost like subconsciously hit my spacebar. Don't mash too hard. Sometimes the inputs can get eaten, and you'll have to pretty much just reset. And it's like that for pretty much all the 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 mashing segments in the game. It's kind of annoying, but uh, doesn't take. A hard mash, just you can hear that in the mic. It's as fast as I go, it's as fast as you need to go. Going faster does nothing else for you. Alrighty, go through the doors. Say hello to Josh. 
It's going to be your first code door. Uh, the code will never change, so 6, 2, 4, 8, 7, and 2. Bada boom. Josh, where are you going? Alrighty, first little minor optimization you can do here is when you go through this door, you can actually roll forward into the little cutscene where it shows Josh closing the door behind you. Um, when you roll into a cutscene trigger, uh, you actually get the forward progression after you recover from the roll. Instead of just walking into the, walking into the trigger, you actually will roll through it, so you get to move forward just a little bit farther. So, you know, you save, you know, half a second, but still, those seconds will rack up because there's a few spots that you'll do it in the run. So, we'll open the door, roll. And as you can see, I pretty much get, got to the first stall of the bathroom. If you walked into the door, you probably would have been about right here. So, like I said, it's a few steps, you know, a few steps forward. Not, not, not too big of a deal, but might as well do it if you can do it, especially when it's uh, pretty easy. So this segment right here is supposed to be the uh, your first enemy encounter. Kind of gives you the the basics of fighting an enemy. You're supposed to just run past this nurse right here, but for the sake of combat purposes, since we are going to have to do melee combat in this run, I I'm kind of going to go over some of the things that you can do. So you ready up, of course, with L. Oh, your left trigger and A's are your light attacks. When you do combos, you always want to end with X. So like A, 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 X. So that's light, 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 heavy. Uh, also, when you're uh, in the stance with a melee weapon, if you just hit B, you uh, duck. But if you hit B in a direction, you'll actually do a dodge move. And that'll actually come into play against uh, Asphyxia. You can even do it forward. You won't, even, you won't even get the roll if you're in this stance. You you get the, like, a lunge forward. So, it's a good thing to kind of get used to when you're doing any percent uh, new game. Any new game route. Kind of get used to the, the, the melee combat, because it really comes into play. Um, I usually grab this first aid kit when I do new game, because it's right there, it's right next to the door. It's really nice to have an extra uh, medkit, especially in the beginning of the run. Because this is the only point where you would take time to grab a health kit for part for the first part of the run. Because you don't get a free health refill until the very end of the game. And I think it's like at the very beginning when you start the underground segment. So, having this as a backup just in case you take too much damage. Because once you get below, I think, 80-90%, you will be in danger and you will move slower. So go ahead and just grab this. Takes an extra second. Grab the second. Go through the go through the door. All right. When I go through this door right here, uh, Josh is up on a stairwell. He's gonna throw a wheelchair at us just to kind of slow us down. And if you go, uh, let me see if I can show you what happens when you go into it head on. See, he gets kind of hung up. And sometimes when you go up that way. Uh, He'll put the wheelchair will actually push you back. So what I tend to do when I come into this room is I'll walk forward, kind of start running to this wall and holding left, and I'll actually go up the stairs sideways, and then you know it'll move Alex's hitbox, make it a little bit smaller to where majority of the time the wheelchair is just gonna miss. So uh, get up here, turn off your flashlight. There are two nurses in here that will activate, though they're gonna activate anyway because you get too close to them, but. Oh, this actually be good if it, she actually hits me. Okay, okay she actually did. Uh, you see the blood splatter on the screen. Um, as I was going through the wall, you actually have iframes, so you won't take damage. As long as you get the slit open without getting hit, uh, you'll be fine. Because I think as they can knock you out of the animation when you're trying to open up the door. So, But as you're going through the door, you're perfectly fine. Nothing to worry about. Go to the left side of the bed, and then we get the the cool bugs. By cool bugs, I mean these guys suck. 
their main attack is they attach to you and start slowly draining your life where you have to do a prompt to, you know, mash and get them off. But what we're going to do right here is you're going to hold right on the left stick and hold right on the right stick. And that's going to move us right into the door that we need to get into and also adjust the camera. Sometimes if you're quick enough, which I think we got, uh, the bugs won't attack you right there. Usually you're going to have at least one attached to you. The good thing is you don't have to worry about shaking them off. The only thing you have to do is come right here, drop down. The second you drop down right here, the bugs will explode. You don't have to worry about them. You'll take some damage, but it's very minuscule. So keep your flashlight off here, because there are nurses. You won't turn on your flashlight until after we talk to Josh. Go ahead and grab the key. As you grab it, uh, sometimes you can kind of move towards the right and give yourself a little bit of a head start before the key shows up in the middle of the screen and starts floating. Okay. Here's a very important thing. When it comes to using uh, keys or anything, any kind of item on anything, instead of uh, opening up your, how it says inventory LB, highlighting it, and then hitting A to use, you actually can just hit LB, highlight the thing that you want, then let go of LB, and it will use the item. The reason you want to do that is because sometimes you're not close enough to the thing that you need to unlock. So you'll be sitting there, and I did this too, You'll be sitting there mashing A, and then you're not close enough, so you skip to the prompt that, or the the little the, the words that say, Hey, you aren't close enough. What the fuck are you going to do? And then you hit A again, then it examines the thing you're trying to unlock, and it tells you it's locked, so you waste a bunch of time. So that's no bueno. So just by LB, highlight the item, let go, is the quickest and safest way to unlock something in this game without having to have the fear of wasting more time by examining something that you didn't need to examine in the first place. Alright, here's Josh. Uh, this segment right here is the first time that you actually have to answer uh, questions. Or, I guess you can call these the talking segments. The, uh, as you can see, there's a choice for Y and a choice for X. Um, this uh, For this scenario, you'll hit Y There'll be one more, and you'll hit Y again, and then that'll be it. That is the fastest dialogue sequence for this area. And if you want to, when you get to the spot, just keep mashing Y throughout the cutscene. After you get the second prompt, you can stop. So Josh wants us to go find his uh, precious rabbit. Precious Silent Hill 3 rabbit that doesn't need to be in this game. Right here, it's okay to turn your flashlight back on if you need to. Kind of dodge this thing, because it will hit it. As you can see, you get hung up on it. Uh, here's another door where you're going to open it and then roll to get a couple of steps uh, forward into the room. Doesn't look like it, because it goes into a cutscene trigger where he's walking forward, but I promise you, you are ahead a couple of steps. All right, here's another mashing segment. Like I said, don't mash it too fast. You don't have to do it fast. I've had times where if you mash it too fast, um, it breaks and you lose. It kind of sucks. <laughs> and you get to reset your run. So leave the room. Bug's going to attach to you. Don't worry about it. Get up to this door where Josh was at. Hit LB. Highlight the rabbit. Let go. Skip the cutscene. You're done. You're done without Camilla. So we got a big old cutscene right here. Sadly, there's a handful of unskippable cutscenes that do take a little bit, but it does give you time to get your bearings and, you know, this could be your pee break or get a drink of water, which, you know what, I actually am going to get a cup of water as this cutscene's going, since I'm already getting parched from talk uh, talking.
We. You got so much time to do stuff. Alrighty. So, if you've done New Game Plus, you should already know that the laser pistol has infinite ammo. Well, since we're not allowed to use the gun in this run, we will have to be picking up, we'll be picking up certain ammo along the way through the run. And most of it is just for uh, Amnion at the end. When we fight Asphyxia, we're going to use four shotgun bullets, and then the rest of it's going to be melee, so. But I will definitely let you know the ones you need to get. So after the cutscene, you'll walk forward, trigger the other cutscene, and then you'll start walking towards your house. Pretty, pretty bare-bones stuff. Skip the cutscene. Hopefully you'll skip it to where... As the, the house is coming into focus, and the blackness is going away from the screen, that's when you should hit start. If you're hitting start right there to skip it, there's a good chance that you'll pause the game. And it actually happened to me in the New Game Plus tutorial. But... Just wait a little bit longer so you don't have to worry about getting out of a pause menu. Alright, go in the house. And here comes the first big difference from New Game Plus. Hello? Still gonna go upstairs, you're still gonna go into your room. But instead of grabbing that wonderful, sweet pistol, we grab the boring flashlight. Which will trigger a cutscene, which you can skip. And after that, we gotta say bye to the pistol. I know. And then we gotta go downstairs. Okay. This is where, uh, you get... There, there's a thing that you can do during cutscenes sometimes, where you can move. Because it's not going into, like, a cinematic... You know, it's a cutscene, but it's not, like, a full cinematic cutscene. To where, like... Some of the cutscenes will still be, like, uh, with the in-game uh, model and everything. You know, I guess that's still in-game, but whatever. Um, so when I skip this cutscene, it's still going to be black. The screen's going to be black, but you're going to hear Alex talking. You can move during... You can actually start moving while the black screen is up. So watch. I'm going to skip the cutscene. I'm actually going to start moving. You just stay here. Well, I turned around somehow. You're supposed to be facing this way. I don't, I don't know why that happened. Um... So you're facing right here. If you just hold forward during that blackness, you'll come out of that uh, the black screen about right here instead of, you know, all the way back here. So again, saves a little bit of time. You can do that here. We're going to do it in another spot in a, in a little bit, probably about five or ten minutes. So go down here. As you go down here, you're going to have your first encounter with uh, a lurker. And the lurker has the same usually has the same pattern every time. After you skip the cutscene, he will come out of the water, you're gonna run up to him, and you're going to A A A X A A A X. So light, 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 medium, or light, 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 heavy, light, 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 heavy. That'll kill him. Don't have to worry about him anymore. So we'll go ahead and do that. Skip the cutscene. Run up to him. Light oh, he lunged. That can happen. So light, 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 heavy. Light, 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 heavy. And he is done. He can lunge if you're too slow. So whenever whenever you skip the cutscene, just start, start holding forward and get ready to slice his face. Alright, so after that, you're going to go up to the generator. Skip all this crap. Gonna get the garage remote, and you can skip that. It's just telling you, A, you need to get gas for the generator. Which, <clears throat> it's kind of stupid. There's just a lock on the door down there. That's it. A little pull up lock. If you would have just done that, he could just leave. The water's not that deep. But he's stupid. <clears throat> Living this house all your life, you don't even realize this shit. Alright, after that, you get the garage opener, you're gonna go outside. We're going to the garage. When we open the garage, a lurker's going to come out. And you can do, right here, you can do one of two things. You can either A, kill the lurker, <coughs> which is the thing I don't do. Or two, run past him, go in the garage, you grab the pipe, switch to the pipe, 
go to the door that has the gas canister and start mashing A to pry it open. If you do it right, you'll pry it open the second the lurker lunges at you. So it'll actually hit you, but the door will still open. Then you can quick get up, grab the canister, and leave without even having to fight them. So I'm going to show you guys, I'm going to show that method because, you know, the other method's self explanatory. Kill them, that's all you got to do. <clears throat> so go down here. Once you get out right here, you can actually use the, the remote. You can't skip this. Yeah, you can't skip this cutscene. So the Lurker's going to come out of the garage. So right now I'm already holding forward. We're going to go over here to this bench, grab the pipe, switch to the pipe, go here and mash A, and hope to God you did it right. Which I did. Quick get up. Take. Yeah, you're going to take some damage, but like I said, it's very minuscule. Uh, you can run past that guy. There you go. Tony, you, that saves... I think that saves more time than having to actually, like, you know, fight a lurker. So. Alrighty. Uh, go through here. Get your pipe back out. Pry this open. Then you're going to walk over here to the truck. A lurker's going to pop out. The only thing you're going to do is whenever you see the left, the, where it says, in, you know, right there where it says inventory LB, hit it, highlight the gas can, let go. And then you can skip all this mess. So after you get right here and you skip this, you can start moving again. The only thing you're going to do to dodge that lurker is you're going to hug the right wall. And usually when he jumps, he'll, he'll, he's always going to lunge at you, but he, most of the time he's going to miss. So turn around. Okay, that time he didn't lunge. It's fine. And then we're going to head back downstairs into the basement. Because now that we have the gas, we can use the generator, which allows us to <clears throat> drain the water. Sometimes this guy will hit you. <coughs> As you see, he hit me right there, but I was in iframe, so it didn't matter. But sometimes when you leave right there, he'll swing late and you actually will take some damage. But, um, it's nothing, nothing too serious. Nothing, nothing really to worry about. Alrighty. Go downstairs. Right when you get to the generator, you're gonna press LB and highlight the gas canister. Let go. Skip this cutscene. Go to the door. It's gonna play another cutscene. Skip that. Open the door. Dunsies. Alrighty. Now you're outside in the backyard. I'm going to go all the way to the back gate. Then we're going to start the uh, uh, cemetery area. Okay, so when you go through this door, it's going to it's going to go to a load screen. After the load screen is done, um, you're going to see Alex. Uh, just kind of like it, normally, if you were just to uh, after the load screen, just kind of if you were just watch the cutscene that happens right there, he just slowly walks. What's really funny is you actually can move him. You can actually move Alex during this time. Which, you know, you can actually get more forward progression during, like, I guess what technically would be a cutscene, which is really funny. So, during the load screen, just kind of hold left on the right, or on the left stick, so, you, so he can immediately start moving. Now watch this. See? He can already start moving. And if you start moving in the right way, look how far I got. Look how far up I get from right there. When... I would have been right here if I didn't press anything. And if you're not holding the left stick to move right when this load screen goes away, it actually will you actually won't be able to move. You have to move it like a, it's probably like the first few frames. But sometimes you'll get stuck right here, but even if you get stuck anywhere, getting any kind of free forward progression during like a cutscene, it's 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 free time save. So, neat little trick. Uh, go ahead, right here, once we get, we navigate to this area, we're going to see a cutscene with Mayor Bartlett, or, I guess, Mysterious Man Digging Holes. And after that cutscene, we're going to switch to the pipe, because we are going to have to fight a feral. So there's Mayor Bartlett. Go ahead and switch to the, the pipe. When you climb down here, it's going to trigger a cutscene with the feral. 
this thing is going to lunge at you after you skip this cutscene. So just kind of back, start holding back to back up. Maybe like back and to the left. And when you do that, he'll miss. You're going to hit him. Uh, light, light. You'll do light, light, heavy. It'll stun him, put him on the ground, and then you just press X to do a quick kill. Alright. What's stupid is, you can't grab this stupid item that we need unless you kill that feral. If you go up here and examine this thing, while that feral is still alive, Alex will be like, oh, I need to take care of the dog first. It's like, okay. Alright, go ahead and switch back to the knife. I always feel comfortable, like, running with the what I think is the lightest weapon, because... It might just be me, it probably isn't. I don't think you lose uh, movement speed when you have certain weapons equipped. But I always like switching back to the, the thing that I'm going to be using the most. Alrighty. Just kind of navigate through this maze. Uh, it's really kind of self-explanatory. I really don't really need to explain. Just kind of follow the path that I'm following. Uh, Feral's going to jump out here to the right. Ignore him. Run all the way over here. There is a chance that he might jump and uh, you'll have to like mash to get him off. If that happens, kind of sucks because that does some damage. But that's why we, bought, we brought that backup med kit just in case that happens. Go down here. There's going to be another feral in the center. Again, he's going to try to attack you. Just keep moving. Go up here. We're going to get ready for probably the hardest puzzle in the game. It's called put two pieces together and you win. Grab that plate. Come up to this. LB. Highlight that one. LB. Highlight that one. Let go. Shut up. Can't be used here. Get out of here. And then it'll open for some reason, which is really weird. Alright. Oh my god, that was a cemetery, guys. It was so hard. Alright, just follow this path. We're going to meet L. L's going to give us the radio. Which doesn't really matter. We're doing all of this all because we can't use the laser pistol. Laser pistol is the reason why you can do clips in this game. Why you can clip through walls, blah blah blah. So, with New Game Plus, you just grab the pistol, clip through the attic door, you're done. New Game... You have to do all the crap that we've been doing just to get the pistol so you can do a certain clip in the cemetery to move the game ahead like 60%. That's it. And then after that, the whole run is New Game Plus in terms of clips except for like fighting bosses and fighting enemies. That's it. Alright, go in here. This is Curtis's junkyard. And I will go over clips uh, when I do get the when I do get the pistol, which is going to be pretty quick. Got to go all the way around. So when we talk to Curtis, we have to talk to him three times. One's going to be with Y. One's going to be X. One's going to be A. Just do it in order. Do Y X A, and then you can skip the cutscene. Uh, there's actually going to be a cutscene that you can skip right here that starts the conversation. So do Y. Start mashing X. Then go to A. Start mashing A. You can understand why Curtis is a jerk. Because he is a jerk. And then an actual cinematic cutscene will start. Just press start to skip it. And hey, we got the handgun. Isn't that neato? Look at this boy. Okay. There's a good spot that I can actually just show you uh, clipping in a nutshell. Maybe right here? Okay. So, clipping, the reason this run is completely different than any other the, Silent, the other Silent Hill speedruns is that we can use the pistol to clip through walls to skip huge parts of the game. Like, it's huge sequence breaks. And it's all because 
when Alex aims his pistol, he actually moves forward. So as you can see, if I keep uh, aiming and unaiming the pistol, I will keep moving forward. And we do, uh, when we actually start doing the clip, the way we do it is we aim at whatever wall that we're trying to clip through. Then you let go of aim, strafe to whatever direction, so left or right, aim, let go, strafe, aim. But you're going to do that quick. And as you're doing it, whenever you move left, let go of the stick, don't touch it, aim, let go, then you can hit the stick again and strafe into whatever direction that you want to strafe into. So when you do it in quick succession, As you can see, he's trying to go through the wall. And we do that in certain areas that allow us to uh, clip through walls and, skip, like I said, skip huge parts of the game. Uh, right here, we're maybe 10, maybe 5, 10% into the game. But we're going to do a, a clip that's going to help us skip 60. We're going to be at like the 60%, 70% mark at that point. Okay, so you're going to grab handgun ammunition right here. You're going to grab the other one right here. And guess what? That's all the handgun bullets you need for the run. You don't need to grab any more handgun bullets. All right, we're going to go ahead and leave. Go this way. There are going to be ferals out here. Not a big deal. You're just going to run past them and leave the junkyard. Just kind of go over here. They'll probably start chasing you. You can hear them. Nothing really too big to worry about. And we're going to start backtracking to the cemetery. But not before we get introduced to uh, the most annoying uh, enemy in the game. And I like to call them Don't Fight These. Because they're broken. Smogs are some of the hardest enemies in any Silent Hill, I swear. Like, their weak points is their lungs, which is always covered. If you get anywhere near, near you, if you get anywhere near them, they'll stun you. They have an attack that's like practically a half screen stun that does ongoing, it does like ongoing poison damage. They're dumb. They're, they're dumb enemies. Yeah, ferals, just keep running. There's going to be one chasing you right here. There's going to be one right here. Once you get to a certain point, they'll stop following you. All right, we're going to cut we're going to be coming up to the first clip in the run and this is a very unusual one. Instead of actually facing the door and doing the clip, we're actually going to face it sideways and you're always going to strafe into the door. So like, if the door, make sure a feral's not behind me. Ugh. Okay. So let's say the door is right here where this light is. I would keep aiming, but I'm going to be constantly hitting left. You can even hold left. I've had it, or hold whatever direction, and you can actually go through it. This, the hit detection of this next wall is very, very small. Like, it's, it's really, really easy to get through. All right, we're going to try to do this before the smog gets us. You're going to go up to this door, aim, and keep letting go. As you can see, it's trying to go through, and... Almost! No, it's not gonna let us go! Oh, come on! The smog's gonna get us! There we go! Where is he? Ooh, he almost got us. He's a spooky boy. So, does this look familiar to any of you that have played this game? That is the entrance to the sewer, the, uh, the... Not the sewer, I guess, uh... The underground area that you would get into... From City Hall. And this is after you would beat Scarlet. And the only thing you have to do to trick the game. Look at this. I'm going to do a magic trick for you guys. Uh, you see my inventory? I got this knife, pipe, gun. Whatever. I'm going to go down this ladder. And when I come back up. I'm going to have everything. That you should technically have at this point in the game. Just turn the camera stick right. That's the quickest way to go back up. And now since we're going up this for the first time, the game's like, oh, they they just finished the underground area and got the ceremonial dagger. All right, let's keep going. 
Even does the cinematic where you climb up. It's crazy. Alright. Would you look at that? Look at all that stuff I have now. I even have the ceremonial dagger. Which, guess what? You need to get out of here. Isn't that neato? Alrighty. Keep the dagger out. We're going to backtrack all the way back to the shepherd house. While dodging stupid enemies. Uh, this part, it's kind of dumb. There's ferals, there's smogs. Uh, the ferals have a good chance of lunging at you. Sometimes the smog up here is going to be blocking the way you need to go into. <clears throat> Let's see if he's being a good boy today. Hey, he's being an okay boy. Still get through. Alright, and just follow this. There's going to be a smog that pops out right here, but he won't attack you immediately. Most of the time he gets out of the way pretty quick. Oh my god. Ugh. Big old hitboxes in this game. Alright. Skip all this. And I know, like, the upgraded pistol is behind these, uh, the wood panels. Guess what? You don't need it. The pistol is needed, like, in very few parts in the game. Alright. You're gonna go down here. There is gonna be a feral, so be careful. Uh, just try not to get, uh, tackled. That is your main goal with ferals. Is not getting tackled. Alright. Just keep on backtracking. There's gonna be a smog out here. Again, just ignore it. It's not really a big deal. Except when he has a huge hitbox. Ugh! You see, the, I got you close to him, he just goes blah! And stuns you and drains your health like a jerk. Alright, and there we go. Alright, so we're going to go back through the basement, and we're going to get the attic uh, door key. Instead of doing the annoying attic door clip, we're just going to get the key. Because it saves, you know, even if you were to get the attic door clip, like, first try and a really fast pull, you might only save like five seconds. It's not going to be a lot. You might as well do, like, the consistent way and come over here, examine the door, skip the cutscene, and then use the dagger. Uh, we're going to grab the key, but we're also going to grab the upgraded shotgun in here. So just walk to the bench, grab the key, turn right, the shotgun is right there, grab the shotgun, and there you go. And as we're going back upstairs, go ahead and switch back to the pistol. And we're going to go upstairs. And at th this point, the run would, is going to start looking very similar to uh, uh, New Game Plus. Because we're going to be doing the same clips and the same everything, except for how we fight enemies and how we fight bosses. Alright, go up the stairs. Uh, there's a clip that you can do through this wall right here. Uh, it's really hard to do. And it's not worth unless you get it first try. So just go ahead and push the big old armoire out of the way. Open this. Skip the cutscene. We're going to have ourselves a little, little slide puzzle. So just kind of do the puzzle. Kind of be a little, little patient with it. Because it can eat inputs and it gets really annoying sometimes when you're trying to... I think I messed that up. I totally did. What am I doing? Did I mess it up? Whoa. 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 What did I do? What did I do wrong? That's what I did wrong. Sorry. I'm sorry for everyone that just saw this. And they're gonna be like, uh... Uh, we don't know what to do now. It's fine. You can figure it out. It's not a hard thing to figure out. Alright. Alright. Instead of going back downstairs and doing the clip, or doing the, go through the low door and then activating the cutscene, blah, 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 that would go to the, the dark shepherd house, uh, we're going to clip right here to skip that load door so we don't have to look at a load, uh, or a load screen. So it's between this rail right here and this one right here. So just go up to the, the, the spot where you fill the wall, start strafing, you'll get a pull. 
And once he gets pushed forward really fast, just let go, and you're gonna fall through the floor. Every single time. And look, there's the door. Look at this door. See, we didn't have to go through this. Go through a load screen. That's pretty cool. Alright, start going down the stairs. It'll trigger this cutscene, and we're gonna start the Shepherd dungeon. Alright, first things first, you're gonna hold left. Well, kind of like back left. Start going up the stairs. Then we're gonna grab the cleaver. Jump over here, grab the first mask. One of two masks. Grab the stuffed rabbit. You can clip through this wall right here uh, to get to the spot where you need to be. Um, it's kind of hard, and it's not really worth unless you do it really quick and get everything first try. So, <clears throat> uh, while it's something I did find out, I it's, it's not worth it. It's just easier to get the guaranteed uh, strat and just go back, just backtrack downstairs, go into the kitchen. All right, you're gonna grab this mask and then you're gonna get attacked by a bug. So grab it, back up. The bug will fly in the air. Shoot it. Quickest way to deal with that without getting grabbed. All right, you're gonna go up here, mash A, because unlike most of the other things, they're just like, oh, use LB. They want you to examine it. And then press A and go into your inventory. It's, it's kind of annoying. You can't go up to it and just hit LB, whatever mask. Because it's going to be like, you can't use that here. Ooh. So you're going to use the indifferent mask. Then you can go to the other side, do the same thing, press A. Then use the frowning mask. Alright. As we leave through the kitchen, we're going to get attacked by a schism. Schisms are very, very, very mean. They have very big hitboxes and they're really annoying to get around. So, we're going to do this. You you will most likely take damage here, but it's not really a big deal, as long as your health's pretty good. And even if you're scared, uh, right there where I'm pointing, there's actually a health drink. And if you did pick up the med kit that I was talking about at the beginning of the run, you feel like you need to use it now, you can. Um, there's never a bad spot to use that health kit I told you to pick up. There's never a bad spot. <clears throat> okay. So what you're going to do, he's going to come from like, see how, you see how the doorway is right here? He's going to come into that next doorway, and he's going to come from the right. So what you're going to do is you're going to try to like, make him come through the archway to where there's enough room for you to just run past him. Because if you run past him, and he's stuck, and he's like stuck in this room right here, where I'm pointing, um, and then you hit the lever, he actually won't... He, he'll despawn. He's gone. You don't even have to shoot him. But if he gets into the other side when you pull the lever, then he's going to be there the whole time. And it's kind of a pain in the ass. And we're probably going to have to use handgun bullets to, to get rid of him. Never use your shotgun. Never use it. Until it's time for asphyxia. That is so important. If you have to kill something, do it with the pistol. So, I'm going to kind of show you the way I do it. And most of the time I get this, I guarantee you, watch, I'm not going to get it right here, because I'm bad. <clears throat> so I kind of move over here, to where he moves kind of far out of the way. Right there, I kind of rolled. I don't know if he's going to... I didn't grab the lever in time. Oh, nope. He didn't make it in. At least I didn't think he did. Nope. He's stuck on the other side. We don't got to worry about him, man. We got to save our bullets. The only thing we did was take a little bit of damage. It's not, not a big deal. Alright, next room, go over here, move this, grab the black heart metal, or heart of darkness, whatever you want to call it, go up here, go underneath here, grab the vile axe metal, there's a bunch of dead schisms on the ground, but they don't activate until we backtrack. But guess what? We don't have to backtrack. Because we're going to do a clip that's going to get us downstairs way quicker. Since we're technically in the attic area, well, I guess real quick, let's do this first. Use the, the Heart of Darkness in the middle, 
Vile Axe on the left, and the Fallen Star on the right. I lied to you. Don't listen to me. I am I am wrong. <laughs> Use the Fallen Star on the left, and the Vile Axe on the right. I'm sorry. Sorry. It's muscle memory. I'm, I'm kind of just dumb when I explain it. Okay. You can either clip right here, kind of like how we did after the slide puzzle, or, and this is what I do, is clip right here through this pipe. Because the pull-in is really quick, and the drop is really fast. And this will put us right on the staircase. So, I'll show you this one first. Kind of give you an idea. Alright, there's the pull. I kind of, well, it's kind of lifting me up. There we go. As you get uh, deeper into the pipe, just kind of turn sideways. And when you do, you'll just kind of fall through the ceiling. And now look where we're at. We're, just, we're right at the staircase. So we can go down and hit the lever. Um, <clears throat> some people don't like that one. Some people like doing uh, a different uh, way of, you know, clipping. <clears throat> I like that one because it's really quick. And it puts us really, really far ahead. So as you can see, as I'm coming back in here, the schisms are waking up. But screw them. We don't got to worry about them. So you can either clip right there. You can clip right here. Kind of like in the same spot where we did. But I feel like it's harder to get the clip here. But if you do get it, as you can see, it's really slow. But once you do get it, you'll fall in the same spot as you did uh, when we did the, the one after the slide puzzle. It's, you fall in the exact same spot. And then you can just go around, go down the stairs. Um, whichever, whichever, which, either way you pick what you want to do is uh, as you're going downstairs to switch to the knife because we're going to have to use the knife first in the next room. Alrighty. Go up the stairs. You gotta do a very, very hard puzzle because this game is full of very, very hard puzzles. Uh, move that up. To move the small hand to two. Hit left on the left stick. Move this up to 6, 206. Uh, skip the cutscene right here. And then just walk up here to the lit one. Highlight Robbie and use him. And then use the knife on the spooky door. Grab the knife. You're kind of you're forced to take the child's drawing, which is dumb, but whatever. As you're going back out, go ahead and switch back uh, to your pistol, because the next thing you're going to do is clip through a wall. Alrighty. Okay, instead of going downstairs in the basement with the door that just opened, you're actually going to go over here. And we're going to clip through this wall right here. Kind of like in between uh, like this rectangle and this rectangle. You're going to kind of clip right here. Um, this clip is actually pretty easy. The, the hit detection is very, very thin. As you can see, really quick pull. You'll get about right here. If you get like this and you're stuck, just kind of move... If that doesn't work, if you just hit aim again, you usually will drop to the floor. But do it by doing that, as you can see, we're now where we need to be. So as you're going up to the door, switch to your knife. And then as you're going through and running up to... Well, when you're going to run up to uh, the next key item, you know, where the, the dangling, where the body's at. As you're running up to that, go ahead and switch back to the pistol. To get that out of the way. And then the rest of this is just match shapes. Not not too hard. And that's it. Just go back upstairs and open the door. And that's the shepherd house. Really, <clears throat> really simple level. It does have a couple of clips. Uh, really, really fun area to optimize. Uh, there's some people who use different strats, but uh. Uh, that's the way I do it. That's the way I will always probably do it. Also, I forgot to say this when it comes to clipping. A lot of people have different methods. I mean, the the basis of how to clip is the same, but some people have, like, ways they like to turn and ways they like to move. If you figure out something that works for you, 
do it. If it doesn't work for you, maybe, you know, look at other streamers or other runners of the game and kind of, you know, just see what they do. But I know a lot of us have our own different little uh, ways of doing clips. I should have got more water. Right. Alright, unskippable cutscene right here. Magically, Alex has his jacket back on. Alrighty, after this uh, load screen, you can actually skip this cutscene. Jack it off for some reason. And you can skip this cutscene as well. There's going to be one more cutscene after the load screen too. And the reason I told you to switch back to the pistol is because... Guess what? First thing we're going to do is we're going to have to use the pistol. And might as well just get it out of the way. Uh, when you get to these stairs, a little minor movement optimization. I always just face this way and then go up sideways and move forward and just kind of go in the direction of the stairs. And it also makes, you know, turning to press the... It, it makes it easier to, like, do these other prompts that are about to come up, you know, jump across the, the gaps. Oh, Alright, now we're in Silent Hill. We. We, Silent Hill, we. Alright, cutscene right here. Let's go ahead and skip that. We're gonna run all the way to the end. It's gonna be so much fun. We are gonna do. We are skipping like a pretty huge section though here. You do have to do a bunch of stuff before you get into the penitentiary. <clears throat> but we're just a hop. A hop and a clip and away. Hop and a clip away. Wheeler, Wheeler, are you there? Wheeler, come in. Skip that cutscene. Go back over here. And you can go through this door. It's gonna be a load screen. All right. This next clip. Some a lot of people have a, a lot of problems with this, and I'll let you know right now. This clip was the one thing that was keeping me from running the game because I could not get it down consistently until uh, I kind of figured it out on my own. Um, if you don't do this clip quick enough, there are going to be lurkers and they will come after you after a certain point. So you start getting attacked, you're going to have to fight them. And that's going to be more ammo that you, you know, you have to use. Or, you you know, you can melee them too, but usually it's either one or two of them. So just be careful. Um, here's the clip. Okay, you're going to do the same thing. Strafe, blah, blah, blah. But once you get a pull, is where it gets a little different. Once you get the pull, you're going to look down and look left. And the screen's going to start shaking. When the screen starts shaking, uh, let go of aim. You're going to be stuck in the wall still. Switch to the shotgun. We're going to do a technique called shotgun turning. So you're going to aim the shotgun, look down, and move into the direction of the wall. And when you do that, it should push you out every single time. Um, if you start doing the shotgun turn, and you're still in the, if you're not far out of the wall, and you start like moving inside the wall, just switch back to the pistol, and just kind of like aim to where he moves forward a little bit more until the screen starts shaking, and then you can do you know do the turn. Well, yep, skip all that, and guess what? We're at the the penitentiary. Alrighty, skip this cutscene right here. Where are you? Uh, we're actually going to be using the pistol. We're actually going to start firing some bullets now. I know we've only fired one so far, but we're really going to start firing some bullets now. Uh, pull the lever, skip the cutscene where the door is opening. Go through here, go around the corner. There's going to be a glass window pane. Just shoot it. Hop over. 
And go through here. Most of this is just going to be kind of follow where I'm going. There are two clips in this, uh, this dungeon that we're going to do. Well, they're not towards the, pretty much the end. Go through here. Okay. As we go down this hallway, we're going to have to fight two order members. And they take a headshot. They either take two headshots or a headshot and a body shot. And so, it's two shots regardless. So this is where you want to be really patient. And if you have to, like, just aim for the head twice. Or, you know, body. I, the best way to do it is head body. But I'm, I'm dumb. I like doing double head. Ha! Um... Do not reload your pistol immediately. It takes time to reload the pistol. And when you're reloading the pistol, you can't do anything but, like, wait for the animation to end. You can't come up to the lever. You can't pull it. Um, you can't activate anything. You can't, like, go to a puzzle and start doing it. You can't do any of that crap. <clears throat> I'll even show you. If I'm reloading, I can't pull. I have to wait for the animation to end. So if you are going to reload, which you're going to need to... It's, you're going to pull the lever, and as you're going down these stairs, that's when you need to reload. Because you can't open doors either. Okay, there's going to be two more order guards right here. You're going to need to kill this one. Uh, there's going to be one when you... Uh, if you go, you're you going to go through the right door. There's going to be one right in front of you. Shoot it twice. Then there's going to be one to the left of you. You just need to, like, shoot the one, and you need to, you need to run away and position yourself to kill the other one. So I'll kind of demonstrate. So... Missed his head, so extra shot for me. And I'm gonna go ahead and just not, well, not shotgun. Oh, oh no! These guys can stun lock you. I'm gonna switch to the knife and just kill him. Save the pistol ammo. You don't have to do that. Honestly, it's probably better for you to shoot him, but I just wanted to do it to save the ammo. Pull the lever. Wait for a wheeler to say this. There you go. Once he says nice work back there, then you can skip the cutscene. If you do it too soon, you can get the cutscene glitch, which is a bad, bad thing. Uh, then you'll start fighting the Siam. Just kind of shoot it. It'll die. And then roll it. I kind of messed that up. I kind of I messed it up in the, the New Game Plus, but I'm going to kind of give you the, the long short of it. When you kill the Siam, you're going to move forward... Don't reload, because I reload. That's why I fucked up. Don't reload. Move forward and start moving towards this wall. When you get about right here, I know this sounds really silly, roll into the wall. It's going to show the cutscene of Wheeler uh, putting in the code and opening the door. Uh, for some reason, when you roll into that, that corner, instead of being put, like, right here, you actually get put up, like, right here. You get a couple of, uh, a couple of steps forward. Which can allow you to get in front of Wheeler, which allows you to save a bunch of time. By bunch, I mean like 10 seconds. But, if you don't get it, you're going to have two more chances to get in front of Wheeler. Getting it that first time, the, the way I just explained, is really hard. But it does give you like a head, like a head start, and you actually can actually stay behind Wheeler. Even if you can't get into this door before him. So just kind of follow him up. Sometimes Wheeler likes to like move in a weird way, like... Kind of like that. He'll like move into this corner and get stuck. And it allows you to get in front of him. So that's another way. And this is the way that you probably need to try to get. <clears throat> You're going to pull this lever. Kind of follow him. Follow him. Open up this door and get in front of him. If you can do that, it just lets you open this door right here to the left a little bit quicker. And allows him to get in quicker to initiate the cutscene. Um, I do have a video in my highlights that's called Faster Than a Speeding Wheeler. Feel free to check that out to see what I'm talking about. Especially for the, uh, uh, getting it, uh, getting it from him, like, the very first time. Which is something I've only done, like, twice. Alright, we're getting up to the clips now. The first two clips. Or the only two clips of the, the penitentiary. Let's go up here. Wheeler's gonna open the cell for you. All right, instead of going through these double doors, we're actually going to try to clip through this wall right here. Uh, the way I like doing it, I kind of angle myself to where I'm kind of facing the archway. And I do I start doing my strafe. All right, I 
think that's it. Once you get it, you'll start going... You're having to go through two walls. Ooh, what? I think I'm going to fall through the floor. You guys want to see something really funny? Oh, no. It actually put me in the room. What? Oh, my God. I'm in the table. Oh, my God. Help me. That's fine. Okay, once you get to this point, when you're on top of the table, uh, you can just aim and hold forward, and usually you get through without any problems. But for some reason, I kind of clipped on the other side over there. So now I'm kind of stuck in the table. And this is something that doesn't usually happen. So, if this happens, I kind of know what to do. Just examine the, <laughs> the wire and grab it. And <laughs> he'll get out of the table. Um, that's like a backup, because that usually doesn't happen. What usually happens is when you clip, you'll clip in through right here, and you'll be on top of the table, and you couldn't, you really can't move. Um, so you'll hold forward and keep doing the aim, and it'll keep pushing Alex forward until he falls off the table. And once you get there, you'll be in this position. So I guess if you somehow get that, what, I, what just happened to me, and you're stuck in the table shaking, just examine the wire and pick it up, and then you'll, you'll be fine. <laughs> uh, that's actually something I haven't seen I've seen it happen to other people, but it's never happened to me, so. That's a good thing to have in the tutorial, I guess, the un, the obscure thing. Um, if you want kind of a be uh, another idea of how to do that clip, you can also go to the uh, New Game Plus tutorial. I am pretty sure I got the clip right there, if you're, con if you're concerned. Alrighty. This clip right here, you're going to clip to the fence. Uh, and our main objective is we're going to try to get on top of those bricks, like this brick tube over here. And if we get up there, hooray, the penitent penitentiary is done. But there's one bad thing that can happen right here. <clears throat> there's a gap. If you fall in that gap, it will trigger a cutscene where Alex examines the door at the bottom. He's like, oh, we need a code, and the, the thing doesn't work. And then they make you go do a puzzle. If that happens, you're going to lose a lot of time. Most of the time, I reset, because that's like 30, 40 seconds lost. So, start doing your strafe to get into the, the fence. And as you get about right there, I start looking down and I hold forward. The reason I hold forward is right when I'm able to move, it gives me that little boost so I don't fall down this gap. And once you're up here, the game thinks that we're inside the little tunnel. So when we move forward... Apparently we made it in, I guess, so. And once you get to this archway right here, uh, that's kind of, this is where the cutscene trigger is inside the tube, inside the, the tube, inside the little tunnel. But since we were on the outside, the cutscene trigger doesn't go that high. So what we have to do is we kind of get down here to the right and we roll into the, we kind of like roll through the top and we actually hit the cutscene trigger. And now we're inside. The funny thing is, is nothing's loading. Alex's mom is supposed to be right there. Uh, uh, with these choices, you can do whatever you want. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll do Y, I guess. Skip the cutscene. And then everything will load properly. And you're fine. Alright, now we're in the spooky penitentiary. Go up here. We're going to have one puzzle. Skip that cutscene of it going up. Solution is going to be horsey. Coffin. Nothing. Go ahead and stick your hand inside. And then skip the cutscene. Right here, though, this is a very bad spot to get the cutscene glitch. Um... As you go up here, and you drop down, don't immediately try to skip the cutscene. You'll just pause the game. You're going to skip the cutscene after Alex hits the ground. Once he hits the ground, that is the safest spot where you can skip the cutscene. If you do it any earlier, there's a chance where you get the cutscene glitch. <clears throat> and the cutscene glitch, I know I've been saying it, what happens is, is every time you try to skip a cutscene... The screen will start to fade out, but it will fade back into the cutscene, and you're kind of forced to watch it. You're stuck. 
You don't want that to happen right here. I've had it happen to me in a run right here, and I lost 45 seconds. So, so just let him drop. Right when he hits the ground, that's when you can press start. I've never had it happen to me after at that point. So, after that, squeeze to the wall, and we're going to start making our way to Asphyxia, which is going to be a fun boss fight to explain. Oh yeah, do you remember how I haven't been grabbing ammo yet? Because we haven't had to yet. After this, when we get to the church and stuff, we're definitely going to start grabbing ammo. Alright, we're about to get to a room where there's two needlers. And needlers are dumb. Um, this is another room where you can actually roll into the room to get a little bit farther into the room. It's very, very important here than any other spot. Not only is it movement optimization, it actually will set up the needlers to where you can always hit them. Needlers are very defensive. If you try to shoot them head on, nine times out of ten, they're going to block your bullet. So if you can get them to face another direction, you can hit them from behind, they're not that big of a deal. <clears throat> the good thing is, is Wheeler's actually going to be shooting this entire time. So we're going to try to have them turn around and face Wheeler, so he can use most of his ammo, and you know, we can use a few shots here and there to help him. So, go to the room, roll. You know you've got it right if Alex comes into the frame. Like that. <clears throat> go around. They're gonna swing and miss. See, he's already dead. And he's dead. And you're just, and as you're like, moving over here, and moving the camera, and moving around, just constantly keep backing up to the door that you need to go into. That's you know, the second you kill those, you can immediately go through the door. Do, do, do. Alright, it's time for Asphyxia. This fight is a lot harder than New Game Plus. Because New Game Plus, you just kind of pew-pew laser her. <clears throat> this one, uh, you can use the handgun if you want. I don't recommend it. I think the quickest way to do this is four shotgun shots. And the rest with axe hits. So, I'm going to kind of explain the fight here. Then I'll try to recreate it as best I can. It's going to happen. She's going to come towards you. Try to get at least a couple of shotgun shots in. To see if she'll go into her second phase. Sometimes, man, uh, she won't go... And when she's in her first phase, she'll do this three-hit attack. <coughs> Sometimes, if you're lucky, she'll go immediately for the grab. She goes for the grab. You can get her into second phase pretty quick after that. But what you're going to do is you're going to shoot her twice, and you're going to kind of keep... Kind of stay away from her, because you don't know if she's going to grab, you don't know if she's going to hit you. Um, after that, if she goes for a grab, dodge it, shoot her in the tail, shoot her in the tail, or shoot her in the body, it doesn't matter. But after you used all of your uh, shotgun ammunition, you're going to want to switch to your axe. After that, most of the time, if you stay at a certain distance away... if you <clears throat> After she does the attack, or after she recovers from getting hit... Um, she'll usually do her tail sweep, and if you're after the tail sweep, if she's too close, or if you're too close to her, she's gonna do her scream attack. You don't want that to happen. So what you want to do is after you, you're gonna use the strong attack with the axe. You're not gonna, you're not gonna fully charge it. Just use the X and keep hitting it and do the attack. <clears throat> after she's recovering, you're gonna back up twice to get far away from her to where you dodge the tail sweep, and you're at a good enough distance to where she's gonna do the command grab again. And the only thing you have to do is dodge it. You're going to rinse and repeat until the fight's over. Uh, I know that's a lot to take in. Uh, I'm going to try to get this done as best as I can. Um, this fight is a lot, I feel, is a lot harder than Amnion. Amnion is shooting and, and dodging. It, it's, it, but it's way easier than, uh, than this. But, alright, go ahead and switch to the shotgun. Let's get ready for the fight. If anything, I might die. Uh, uh, maybe a couple of times to kind of show you. Um, it, that is, if this is a bad fight, I might die on purpose so we can show, I can show you again. So, all right, here's the fight. We're gonna shoot her once, shoot her twice. Uh, she's gonna go into the grab. Nope, she. As you can see, she stayed in this phase, and I'm pretty sure I'm below health. You know what? I'm gonna go ahead and let her. I'm gonna let her kill. No, you know what? Yeah, I'll let her kill me. That's fine. Because we actually will we'll spawn in front of the uh, the door. Yeah. 
I guess for hilarity's sake, I'll go ahead and use the health kit. Okay. As you see, I shot her twice. Guess what? They didn't do enough damage to put her into that next phase. The guarantee... I would say the guaranteed command grab phase. Alright, let's try this again. See, right there, I only shot her once. And she ended up going into the second phase. Alright, at this point, you're gonna switch to the axe. You're gonna X. 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 Back up. Back up. Let her do her wiggle. Dodge the command grab. You're gonna X. And nope, that's the fight. Easy peasy, just like that. Some, If you get good, good, good hits with the shotgun, the fight will end pretty quick. See that that was the, that was a good fight. That was a very good fight. All right. After that, switch to uh, I guess the pistol. Yeah, the pistol because we're gonna do clips in the church. So that's asphyxia. It, it it's gonna t it, trust me. Like it looks hard. It is hard, or it may look easy to some people. I I think that fight's very difficult to get uh, optimized because sometimes she does not cooperate. All right, go ahead and move forward. Josh, wait. We're getting to the scary clips in the game. And by scary, I mean these, these we're getting to the really hard clips of the, the run. Go up here. Turn this. There's a smog that could be blowing evil smoke at you, but <clears throat> most of the time you're out of range. All right, the first thing we're going to do before we go into the church, there is some rifle ammunition right here. We're going to grab that. Go up here. And bada boom. Alright, then you're gonna go over to the right. And we're gonna do the first clip. Uh, this clip is a little difficult. Sometimes it has a lot of resistance. Um, not the first rhombus, not the second rhombus, but the third rhombus, you're gonna. This is where you're gonna want the clip. So do your strafing. And if you're met with resistance, which I'm hoping we get, because I kind of want to explain how to deal with it. Let's see, I'm just getting the clip. Okay, do you see how it's, like, shaking the screen and it's not moving forward anymore? If you get this, the only thing you have to do is let go of aim, barely move somewhere else, and then hit aim again. Most of the time, it's going to start the clip. And it's, it's a good way... To guarantee that you're going to make it through the wall. Alright, after you get so far, that looks pretty... Yeah, that looks good. Um, let go of aim. Switch to the shotgun. Hit aim. Then you're going to look... You're going to hold right and then look into the wall. So hold away. Hold <clears throat> the left stick to the right and move the camera to the left. And when you do that, you'll get popped right out of the wall. So that's the first clip. Nothing too difficult, right? Unskippable cutscene. Now, here's the sad part, and this is something that I wish would have worked, but since we we kind of clipped through here and we shouldn't be here yet, um, the game is kind of confused because we haven't grabbed certain plates. Since we have the ceremonial dagger, technically we can do the puzzle, uh, grab the plate, and usually a schism will come open this door for us and be like, oh, we can just do that. But, I'm going to go ahead and just show you what happens. We grab the plate. And he doesn't show up. He decides not to show up. And it's all because we skipped a bunch of stuff. So, for some... The actual cut... The, all, the actual thing that makes him spawn isn't this. It's actually having other key items in your inventory. So, we sadly have to do a clip. Which is the same clip we do in New Game Plus, so <clears throat> something you probably you might be used to if you do the other run. Uh, grab these shotgun shells. All right, this clip is very, 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 very annoying for a few reasons. There's a gate next to you. If you get trapped in a gate, most of the time you're gonna get stuck, and it's really hard to get out. Um. Then there's the one wall. But then there's a second completely different wall above it because it's separated by this little, uh, 
a uh, little partition right here. And then there's a pillar. When you clip into a pillar, instead of it pushing you forward or backwards, it shoots you up. And sometimes it can shoot you down, and you go through the floor and die, and it's funny. Uh, not funny when you have a good run, though. Uh, so sometimes you'll get too close to this, and you'll actually go up into the second wall, but you really need to be going through the, fir through the first wall. And it's, it's... This clip sucks. But, thanks to Arcadia Skies, uh, he kind of figured out a setup to get this. So let's see if we can't get a good, smooth clip going. Because there are clips, like, maybe we'll get one. Alright, that looks good. Look to the left, look down. Wait until the screen starts shaking. Let go of aim. Look to the right. You see that dot on the wall? That's big heads in the way. Look at that. The screen's gonna get covered up by the wall. Hit aim with your pistol. It's gonna look like you're moving left. See how it kind of went like that? Switch to the shotgun. Aim. Look down. You're gonna move the left. You're gonna move the left stick to the left, and you're gonna move the camera to the right. So you're gonna just do a little spin, and just like that, you're out of the wall. Sometimes though, you you get too close to this pillar, and the pillar will start dragging you this way. For some reason, it's it, it, it's really weird and really finicky. But that is the best, and I would say 100% the best setup. To get through that wall. Um, if you figure out something easier, I, you're God. But right now, that is the best possible setup, in my opinion. <clears throat> come over here, grab this rifle ammo. And now we come to the notorious Church 3 clip. But before that, grab this health kit, just in case, because Amnion's a bitch. Especially grab that health kit... If you use, want, use the one that we grabbed at the beginning of the run. Definitely grab that because Amnion is probably going to hit you and she fucking hurts. Alright, Church 3 is the run killer clip. Anybody that runs this game knows this is the run killer clip. Anybody that's watched me run this knows that, oh god, die on Church 3, blah blah blah. That sucks. <clears throat> What's going to happen is you're going to clip right here and it's going to put you on top of this desk. And this wall... Is going to force you forward into this part of the desk right here. Which allows you to fall through the floor. And you'll actually get underneath here. <coughs> which, um... In the end run, we're going to be able to get behind this wall. And get to the end of the church. So, let's see if we can't get it. So do your strafe kind of in the corner. It's going to push us up. You're going to turn the camera to the left. And see what it does. See how it pushed me forward, but it didn't push me all the way? Instead of redoing the setup, the only thing you need to do is turn right. Alex is going to kind of put himself back on top of the table, and then you're going to turn left again. Sometimes you get pushed off, but sometimes, instead of just redoing the setup, you'll get a good enough push to where I'll actually push you into uh, the center. This is why this clip is very annoying. And there we go. I got it. Should fall. There we go. Pretty... Honestly, that was pretty... It, it was pretty quick. Not the quickest, but it's still quick enough to where the run probably won't die. Especially if your PB sucks. So at this point, you're going to kind of move uh, to the right. There's like a very small gap that you can go through right there. And then you're going to head through the wall right over here. You'll... Just kind of, if you get stuck against the wall, just kind of move left and right until you fill the hole. Ha. Huh. And right there, we actually skipped the part where we uh, see Alex's dad die. Uh, and since we did skip the part where we're supposed to either forgive or stay mad at our dad, it actually picks the bad choice. It actually says, oh, we're not going to forgive our dad. So that actually will go towards the whatever ending we get. All right. And just kind of go down, kind of follow the pipe. If you follow the pipe, you won't get stuck on the ceiling because there's the ceiling does get kind of low. Just move over here. And already, once you get to the very end, you're gonna hit a wall. As we know, Alex can move forward while aiming, so we're gonna do a thing called gun walking. You can either do it really slow, 
like that, that will keep moving Alex through the wall. Or, and this is the fast way of doing it, you do a quick gun walk, where you, the, the reticule is going to come on screen, you're going to let go of aim, and then you're going to uh, press a aim again. So it'll look something like this. That'll actually uh, help you move a lot quicker through areas that you have to gun walk, which, <clears throat> in this run, it's going to be right here in one other spot. If you were doing all bosses, you would do it in three spots. Alright, grab the suit. And then go through the steam, and that's the church. And then we just got the last area in Amnion to fight. But at this point, we're, gonna, we're about to lose all of our stuff. Which is sad face, because we get captured. And skip the cutscene. Oh, this next part, you're gonna... You do get a free health refill right here. You are gonna take about 20% damage from getting drilled in the leg. That's fine. Uh, so skip the cutscene. You're always gonna start uh, by mashing A. It's always gonna be A. It's never gonna be anything different. Like I said, don't have to mash too fast. Mashing faster is not beneficial. Skip the cutscene. And then mash X. It's always going to be X. So just A, then X. There we go. Skip that cutscene. Best line of the game. At that point, it won't let us leave the room until we grab the ceremonial dagger. So turn around grab that. You forgot to grab the med kit. There's your last freebie. But hopefully you did grab it. Let's so go ahead and equip the knife. We have to kill two... Four, uh, five order soldiers, and we're going to be using it with. We're going to be using a pistol that has nine shots, and we're going to use all nine of those shots, and we're going to be using the knife. All right, so go in here. Make sure your flashlight's off because sometimes those guys like to move early. But honestly, they're kind of random. They'll do what they want. <clears throat> Break that glass. Grab the handgun. Grab the key. Walk over here. Grab these shotgun shells. Now you're going to be stuck in this hallway, but it actually makes shooting these guys in the head a little bit easier. I usually like to take one of them out with the gun with two shots, and then I like to take out the second one with one gunshot to the head and uh, 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 doing a knife, doing the knife combo, which is light, 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 heavy. Um, the only bad thing is, is sometimes these uh, when enemies die in this game, their hitboxes are active, even when they're on the ground dead for a little bit. Or they're on the ground. The hitbox, I swear, is like... It's huge. And sometimes you'll get blocked. And you gotta wait a little bit longer for their hitboxes to go away. <coughs> so just be wary of that. Uh, you don't need to grab the pipe. You'd only grab the pipe if you were not doing the clips. But we are gonna be doing the clips. Two more guards are gonna pop up right here. Try your best to get two headshots. Good job. If you miss a headshot... Because headshots are so crucial at this point. Because you got to headshot every one of these guys. Every one of the bullets have to be a headshot for you to do this optimally. You're gonna head, like I said, you're gonna headshot the the first guard that you see, the first one. Then you're gonna headshot, use one headshot, then knife combo. So that's two guards. These next two guards, you're gonna double headshot. If you miss a shot, switch to the knife and knife combo them. And then we got one more guard, which we, you know. You need to shoot him in the head twice. <clears throat> so we got the key. What's really funny about this key, you can actually unlock this door from really far away. A little bit closer. A little bit closer. A little bit closer. Okay, so you can unlock the door from right here. So as you're running into this room, or after you go underneath this little part right here, just kind of run towards the door, highlight the key, let go, and then, you know, It'll unlock a lot quicker. And then this guard will come up. You'll kill him. Now he has no more handgun bullets. Oh no. But good thing we don't have to fight Curtis or do any of that crap. Because we're going to do a pillar clip. Like I told, explained earlier, pillars, when you clip through a pillar, they'll shoot you up. So we're going to try to get on top of the ceiling. <coughs> and we're going to go through the ceiling on the other side to get through these locked doors. So the way I like doing this clip is I like getting lined up with the flashlight, or the light switch. And kind of just going back and forth, like, to the left. If you get enough resistance, I kind of look up, and that's usually what will happen. You see him, like, start shaking. 
<clears throat> I tend to usually look up because most of the time he gets shot up through the ceiling. But if he's like going into the wall and he's not doing anything, <clears throat> I try to make it. I try to like like un I let go of aim and go back into aim to see if it'll get that that kind of resistance. The things with clips is it's a feel thing. I can explain it to you all day, but you have to feel it. It, 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 you, you'll know what I mean when you actually start picking up the game. So at this point, you're gonna, this is where you're gonna gun walk again. Um, if you ever get trapped, which you can, uh, if it feels like you're not high enough, if you just kind of look to the right and gun walk once, it'll actually get you to the maximum height you need to be in order to get into this area over here. To so do a quick gun walk, you don't even need to see where you're going because you just fall. You'll know when you get there. You'll just fall. All right, there we go. Now we're in here. Go ahead and grab your weapons. And you're gonna clip through this wall right here. I'm very bad at one of the methods to do, you can do here to get out of this. So I'm gonna show you the pistol method. And I'm gonna try to show you the shotgun method. I couldn't do it in New Game Plus uh, tutorial uh, yesterday, but I'm gonna give it a shot right here. So here's the shotgun method. Just kind of look down right here once the screen starts shaking. Let go, go to the shotgun, and just slowly start turning into the wall. And sometimes you'll get you'll get popped out. Just like that. Hey, I did it. There you go. So what you'll do is as you're turning, you're going to hold right on the left stick, and you're going to put the camera on the right. Okay, you're... Left stick, you're going to go right. Left stick, you're going to go left. Yes. So that's the shotgun method. Let's see if I can't get back on the other side and I can show you the pistol method. See so right there, the shotgun method didn't work. Eh, you know what? If you want to see the pistol method, go to the New Game Plus tutorial. I did it there. It's very simple. I'll try to give you a rough, like, version of what it is. What you do is when you, after you clip to the wall and you're right here in the screen shaking, you'll actually turn into the wall and face this way. You Then you'll aim with the pistol and move right. You'll hit right on the left stick and right on the right stick and go like that. And for some reason, some reason, some reason, some reason you'll some you'll you'll go, uh, you'll get pushed out of the wall. So it's either the shotgun method or the pistol method. You saw the shotgun method here. If you want to see the pistol method, go look at the New Game Plus tutorial. I kind of explain it there, and I tried to explain the shotgun method, but I fucked that up. But, hey, still gonna make a clip tutorial. Don't worry. That shows like the different ways you can do clips. It's still gonna happen. All right, instead of just clipping through this wall right here, like we would do in New Game Plus, we have to do two extra things. And this requires navigating in darkness. Darkness. Okay, as you walk in here, it's a room, it's there, it's just not, everything's not loaded. But it's there. <clears throat> this, uh, if you look this way, where you're facing the door, and just hold forward, and mash A. Well, sometimes. Sometimes that works. There's gonna be a rifle. I'll kinda give you the perspective. There's the door to exit. So when you walk in, you would go up there, to that spot. So that's kind of where you, that's kind of what you want to see. It's really hard to explain. This is something that you're gonna need to get to this spot by yourself, and just kind of, kind of feel where it's gonna be at. If you have to, and this is really good too. Actually, load up a save that starts you here, and just do this area normally where you have L and everything. Because the reason this this area is not loaded is because we haven't saved L yet. L was supposed to be with us, and since the game's like, oh, they're not. Uh, L's not over here yet. It's not going to load these rooms. Like, you know, properly. But the gun's still there. Anything else in this room is still there. 
So maybe check that out. That might be a good way. Maybe even go look at like a a fucking let's play run. Maybe they'll go in here and show you. Um, there are shotgun bullets in here, but let me explain to you. You can grab them if you want. You can beat Ambien with shotgun rifle. But if you do decide to go for the shotgun ammo, um, I have seen people beat Amnion without using the rifle at all. It's just that you grab all this stuff just to be sure you have enough ammo. You have a big enough arsenal to kill the final boss. Because you don't want to go in there with, like, one health kit and then you're forced to do melee attacks. Meleeing Amnion is really hard. That, that, is, that is a mean boss to start meleeing. So, I'm going to kind of give you a, you know, kind of show you where these are at. So, I picked them up, but the best way I could show you is kind of like, they're right across from the door. They're just right across from the door. So, I just went ahead and picked them up for, you know, the hell of it. So, we got, this is, this is what we got right now. We got 13 shots with the shotgun. Got 15 shots. Is it 15 shots or is it 10? I think it's 8 and 10. I'm stupid. I, I don't know. So we're ready to fight Amnion. But first, thanks first, we gotta continue our clips. We got two more clips. Right here, you're gonna clip through this wall. It's uh, kind of do it close to the door. You'll meet some resistance if you're uh, a little too close to the door. But you can just adjust that by moving to the right. See, he's not going through the wall, but if I just move to the right a little bit, <clears throat> sometimes uh, the pull will work. There we go. So we clipped into this room, and this is the room where Wheeler's at. So we're doing a cutscene with Wheeler being stabbed with knives and stuff. Skip that. Um, that's up to you. If you don't give him the med kit, uh, you kind of keep it for yourself. So I say don't give it to him. Uh, New Game Plus doesn't really matter because you really don't need he you really don't need a med kit in that run. Because the pistol is broken. The pew pew laser. Okay, so right here, you're having to navigate darkness again. There's a door that's kind of to the right. So what I do is on the right stick, the camera, I kind of move it right a little bit, and then I run forward. Okay, and after a couple of seconds, if I didn't uh, hit the door, I just kind of move the stick right a little bit more. And if I'm still not hitting it like, I'm, like I am, then I kind of have to adjust myself. I'm like, okay, there's the door I came in. I know the door's over here. There it is. That's another place where you're going to have to kind of maybe watch a, a, a... Or go in here yourself and kind of figure out where it was, where it is. Because I, I had to do that too. Uh, you can skip that cutscene. That was a cutscene after you opened the door. Uh, then you're in one more room of darkness, but the exit door is right there. So just kind of move forward towards it. And there we go. And we got one more clip to do, and then we get to fight the big old bad spider. Ah, okay. So, what we're going to do is we're going to clip this big old door right here. And by doing that and doing it first try, you save about a minute and a half. Um, if you're not comfortable with the clip, because this is one of the... Besides the attic door clip, in terms of, like, physical resistance and trying to cl get a clip started, this is the hardest clip in the game. And shout out to Robots for finding out uh, the setup, because the previous setup done by Spooky Cookies, while it worked, um, it was very hard to set up. So, you can either do that, or if you're still feeling uncomfortable and you don't want to do it, you can just do the puzzle, but you are going to lose a potential minute and a half time save. And, trust me, when you have a run, and you have a good one, you don't want to come over here and do this. Do you see how slow that's going? What they want you to do, they want you to get the eye that's at the very bottom of the screen. They want you to move it all the way around to where that little tiny bottle is where the little, like, air wind symbol is at. Yeah. And then you gotta rotate the middle one. And then you gotta come over here and you gotta rotate this one. This one's a lot faster, but it, it, it takes forever. So, I'm gonna explain this clip as best as I can. Um, it's very hard. There's a lot of things that can happen. There's a pillar right here. You can shoot up in the ceiling, which means you can also fall through the floor. 
What you're wanting to try to do is you're going to start the clip in this corner. And as you start to get a pull, you kind of want to move yourself into the door. So let's see if I can't get that started. So just do your strafing like usual. I'm not going to lie, this might take a second. Because it can't, like I said, it's very finicky. Alright, see, it's trying to pull me into the pillar. We don't want that. That's what you want. You want to be pulled into the door. Once you get to this point, look down. Hopefully it won't spit you out like that. That will happen sometimes. And that sadly just means you have to try again. That was a quick pull. And I got the spit out again. So I'm saying, this is a mean clip. I don't want to be a pillar, Mom. Okay, let's try that. Look down. Okay, you see how the screen is shaking? If oh wow, it spat me out again. I can't. It's not even gonna let me explain. Okay. Do you see how the screen isn't shaking? If it's shaking, most of the time when I'm, what I'm about to do, you actually get stuck halfway. And you're going to get spit out. But if you get to a point where your head's in the door and the screen isn't shaking, you have a good chance that it's you're probably going to make it. So I'm going to slowly, slowly turn left. Oh, and I got the thing that you don't want to happen. You want to get spit in the other way, not that way, game. This is like round five. Alright, let's try... Uh-oh. I don't know if it's going to work. No, I don't think this one's going to work. See how I'm turning and I'm not really getting a pull? And if I keep turning, guess what's going to happen? gonna spit me out to this day this is the one clip I practice I practice this clip a lot because I've had so many great runs die right here but you gotta do it man you have to do it if you want to get super optimized times Alright, that might be good. Or maybe not. Oh, it is good. Hooray! See how it's pulling me through? Hooray! And there you go, you're in the wall. Um, that's one of one of the ways you can get that to work. There's like three other ways you, you can get through that door. Um, if you watch the New Game Plus tutorial, I, I do the shotgun turn method. Because I the clip that I got put me really far into the door. Um, I've actually had it to where the pillar shot me through the ceiling and I actually fell through the top. Um, and then there's times where like the screen will be shaking and you turn and you get pushed in like really fast. So there are many, many possible outcomes to get it, but just getting it started is incredibly difficult and it's probably one of the things once you get um, towards the end of learning this run that you should probably practice the most. Because it's not going to matter how well you do in, against Asphyxia. It doesn't matter how well your other clips are. If you cannot get that clip and it's in your PB. Sorry man. Reset. Try again. And it, and it sucks. Alright. Time for the last fight. This fight I am very bad at. I, I get hit a bunch. But the best way I can say... The first phase, uh, the first thing she's going to do is she's going to try to spit bile at you. Um, most of the time you can get, you can shoot her and if most of the shotgun blast hits her, it's going to knock her back and you can get a couple of more shots. And most of the time after two shots, she'll go to second phase. And then after that, you're just going to try to dodge her attacks and unload on her. The best thing that can happen in her second phase is she'll attack you. Even if you get hit, yeah, you're going to take damage and you're going to have to wait to get up. But her, her claws get stuck in the ground. And that's just <clears throat> open shooting at that point. 
or open season. So, let's go ahead and go give this a shot. All right. If I have a bad fight, I might die. But I think if I die, I have to do the clip again. Um, let's just hope this is a good fight. How about that? All righty. Examine this one right here. There's going to be three cutscenes that you need to skip. Um, do these cutscenes skip slowly because you can get the cutscene glitch right here, which is very bad right here. You will lose so much time. So, just take your time. And after this cutscene, the fight's going to start, so hopefully we get a good fight. So we're going to aim. Do it one more time. Oh, she dodged. That can happen. See if you can't get the other shot in. That should be second phase time. Nope. Oh my goodness. So it's going to be about three shots from the shotgun. Yeah, three shots from the shotgun for her to go to second phase. Um, at this point, if you feel like you need to reload or you're just going to unload and blah, 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 go ahead. The first thing she's going to do is this, like, raining vomit attack. Well, usually. Yeah. And then after that, she tends to go for the the claw attack or the swipes. Just kind of dodge and shoot. Heal if needed. There's the claw attack. She missed, so we just get to unload. Be careful with your shots because she does move wildly. If you run out of shotgun ammo, go ahead and just switch to the rifle. And at that point, you can just start firing. And right, right there, she she kind of gets stun locked. And it's pretty funny. And, uh, nope, not yet. We're almost there. That's the fight. That's what you're looking for. So, not too difficult. Uh, the first phase, just try to get three shots off of the shotgun. After that, um, she'll do the bile attack. And then after that, it's just uh, dodging and shooting. If she gets um, the claw attack and her claws get stuck, that's the best time to get the most damage. Um, if, you're sh if, you, if you're forced to kind of go with the, into the rifle, do it. But that's why we always get the rifle just in case and we grab the ammo. Because sometimes the shotgun bullets don't hit 100% and it only hits a little bit. So it doesn't do the full amount of damage. So as long as you have the rifle as backup, you probably won't die. Especially since you should have the med kit that you had from the church. And that's it. That's any percent new game. Uh, not much different from New Game Plus in terms of clips. Definitely a different beast because we actually do have to try when we fight enemies and fight uh, bosses. And then we get the sad ending. Alex found out he killed his brother. He did not mean to, though. No, he totally meant to. Alrighty. Oh, I guess there's really not much else to say. I watched the ending. There's no end game time. Everything's RTA, so uh, you really don't have to put this at the end of your run if you want. Don't want to. I just do it for funsies because you know, show off the ending. Uh, we got the drowning ending. Hooray! The most boring ending in the game. Um, I guess the only thing I really need to say is, uh. With the whole second clip in the underground area, where I said you could do the pistol method or the shotgun turn method, uh, definitely check out the other video uh, to see the other method. At any point during this run, I said check out the other video, you probably should. Uh, you get to kind of see uh, different methods of how you can do clips. Because like I said, there's a lot of ways you can do clips, and there's people have a lot of personal preferences, and if it works for you, man, do it. That's all you gotta do. Nothing too, not too hard. If it works for you, go for it. As long as it gets through, gets the job done, and gets it done fast. But that's gonna be it for the any percent new game tutorial. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to check out the other tutorial videos I have for Homecoming if you're interested in learning the runs. Um, 
And I guess that's it. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you soon. Cut. Cut. Print. Wrap it up. Do whatever.